Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Today, this is going to be the third tutorial how to do a long distance atmospheric flight in the Delta Glider. Now, normally you wouldn't want to do a long distance atmospheric flight in the Delta Glider. You would want to do a, uh, a ballistic hop because the rocket loses power the higher the air pressure is. So the idea is to go as high as you want. But in order to gain the, uh, the flight dynamics of the device, we're going to go ahead and pretend that we're an airplane. So we're here at Cape Canaveral, and we're going to fly to Edwards Air Force Base. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go over to the map MFD here and target spaceports and find it here. Edwards, press enter. Now we have it selected on the map. So this is what we're looking at. In addition, I'm also going to display some VOR so that we can form a route. So let's go to display and we're going to go down to nav aid markers, and turn that on. Click OK. And now you can see all the VORs are showing up. So I'm going to open Google Earth and my other computer in order to figure out um, what the most efficient uh, route is to get there in terms of Great Circle. And meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to look up the landing configurations here. So we go to F4 to bring the menu up, we and go Info and we'll choose base and we'll choose Edwards and so we're going to be coming in from the east so let's go ahead and use runway 24 to make things easy uh, weather's not simulated very well here four and a half kilometers is plenty enough to land uh, so runway 24 Take down that ILS frequency, write it down, 116.40. And uh, there should be a VOR uh, near it. EDW, take that down. Ooh, um, that's going to interfere. 11640 is going to interfere. Well, that's very strange. Okay, so I'm going to plot a great circle in Google Earth using the uh, ruler tool. We're done with this. We're going to switch now. Uh, oops. Switch left, right here. Go to right. Now we're going to select, and it's a uh, com nav. And what we're going to do is we're going to change our nav frequency to be what we want. So I'm going to go down to here to nav 4 and the ILS on uh, runway 24 was uh, 116.40. So let's go ahead and set that now. And you can see now we've got a, P a VOR cut pi, but we're not paying attention to that one. Potentially. Uh, we're not going to go to that one until, we're not going to go to the VOR until it's time to land. So we want uh, HSI. Select here, left, right, toggles which one you're changing, and we're going to press nav 2. Notice nav 2 is being selected. Press nav again, now it's nav 3. And again, nav 4, 11640. This will be ready for our ILS once we come in. So if I switch back to left, right, now we're controlling the left. Okay, so let's great circle a route from KSC over to Edwards. Okay, now I'm going to be finding this manually. So let's see, I need to find Victorville. Good. 
Okay, should be pretty easy from here on out. Found it. Okay. It really helps having those giant runways. Okay. Uh, it's short enough a route that we don't have much of a, uh, a great circle to contend with. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to plot a route uh, from where we're going or from where we are to where we're going. And uh, this really drives me crazy because uh, I'm only going to do the first couple ones because this could take a really long time. All right, so I'm going to introduce you guys to the very first math equation in the entire uh, in the entire thing. Such as an airliner, we're going to cruise at uh, 37,000 feet, which if you uh, divide by 3.28, which is the conversion factor feet to meters, we're going to be cruising at, um, let's say we'll cruise at 11 kilometers. So I'm going to introduce you to the horizon distance calculation. So you get the horizon distance equal to... Okay, so it's going to be the square root of the height squared plus twice times the height times the radius of the Earth, which is 6371000, and that's equal that equation is in meters. You need to be using the same length unit the entire way. So um, our, di our viewing distance is uh, 370 kilometers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Cape Canaveral and um, select 379. So the question is, why do I not have this memorized? The answer is because this is different uh, for every single astronomical body that you may fly on. So it's important to use equations that don't break. So it just so turns out that this 64 um, times level on the Earth is exactly what you want for determining um, what you can see and can. So what you want to do is you want to center center where your current location zoom level 64 if I zoom in it's 128, zoom down again 32. So go to 64 Center yourself using the left and right and up and down buttons here to pan. And I'm only going to show the first couple ones. But uh, the first the first one we're going to do, I'm going to write down... Uh, choose the furthest one that you can still see. So I'm going to choose CTY, and that's 11200. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this one now and going in the direction that I know we can be going. So the next one is going to be this PFN 114.30. And what I'm doing is I'm building a flight path that we can navigate on. So I'm going to do this again. And now I can see just barely BFM 112.80 makes it. And we're just basically going to be continuing this over and over until we get there. Okay, so I've completed the route now. Um, so why are we even doing this? I'm figuring most people are probably familiar with a uh, instrument flight plan. So that's basically the same thing we're doing uh, that an airliner would do. Um, for an instrument rated flight uh, IFR instrument flight rules so the route we're going to be taking is KSC, CTY, PFN BFM RQR, LCH LOA, LZZ SJT INK, PIO TCS, SSO, IWA EED, HEC and EDW so, yeah, I mean, that seems a lot involved. You don't have to do that. Um, in fact, uh, I think it's already done. If I've selected, which I have, now I go ahead and do um, 
no, that's actually it. So you see this um, this tape here. There's now a arrow right here to the left, and that's actually going to highlight the base. And if we flew straight for that, then that would work. Um, that would be the equivalent of flying the great circle route, which is the most efficient thing to do. But I'm not going to do that for the sake of realism. So let's go ahead and set our comm now to the first, um, second, and third systems. We're going to cycle comm nav one, two, and three. So nav one, we're going to set to CTY, which is 112.00. And we're on the ground now, so we're not going to be able to see it until we get higher. And we're going to set this one to PFN 114.30. And we're going to select NAP 3. We're going to set that to 112.80. Okay. So now what this is doing is our, it's queuing up our first and second and third waypoints. That way, when we reach these waypoints, all we have to do... HSI, here we go. All we have to do is just hit this nav button three times and it will uh, it'll work for us. So I've now reset. If you uh, click this track button, it will allow you to see these buttons here. I guess I probably should have mentioned that earlier in case people were having issues with that. Press track and it will lock the tracking view onto the craft. And I'll know right away, this line here represents our horizon marker. If that doesn't reach, uh, that doesn't reach CTY, then we'll know that we didn't do enough. All right, so let's start preparing for takeoff. Check our air flight control services are on. We're going to move our elevator trim up. And... Uh, Instead of the map, we're now going to load in the HSI on this one, confirm the configuration matches, which it does, and put the primary flight display surface MFD here. And like an aircraft, we're going to use indicated airspeed. Check our fuel, which are almost completely full, which is fine. We're going to need just about all of it. And I know we're going to head in a northwesterly direction, so let's go ahead and start setting our um, heading pulled autopilot here. We're going to set, but not turn on. Uh, and we'll go halfway to 315. Uh, for speed, I think a good a good speed range is about 350 meters per second, which is about 800 miles per hour. Again, this craft is huge. Um, well, not huge. It's extremely inefficient, technically. Oh, this is extremely irritating. I don't know why it bothers doing the dot zero. Can't even adjust it. it seems kind of pointless. And our altitude, we're going to set to eleven kilometers. And again, this is um, this is compounding, so it'll go to one thousand. Okay, there's 10 kilometers, 11 kilometers. Okay, again, set, but not turn on. Confirm our external configuration here. All hatches are closed. And we're going to go up here, turn on our lights here. Put our nap landing lights on, too. Perfect. And, um... That's about it. So we're ready for takeoff. We're going to uh, turn ever so slightly to 315. Uh, put our landing gear up. And uh, start looking for CTY. We're going to go to 11 kilometers. Okay, this is it. So engaging main engines in 3, 2, 1, now. Oh dear, what has happened? Before we do any of that, I forgot we should check the uh, air flight control services. Okay. And they are responding. That's uh, important. I should have done that before.
Okay, so uh, the real question I have is, why is my joystick throttle not working? Well, that's okay. I'll just have to configure that later. So I'll do it the other way. Control plus, engaging main engines for takeoff. So I'm now pitching up and we're going to wait until the uh, nose comes up off the ground. There we go. 10 degrees up. I'm going to throttle back now. Put the gear up quickly. Retracted. Okay, gear is up. Again, the incorrect radiator retracted voice is on. So we're going to turn to... Uh, 315 and now you can see that arrow has now turned to a vice and that vice is going to be where you want the uh, want the indicator all right now even though we're fully capable of uh, climbing at 30 well technically we're capable of climbing at, at exactly uh, the maximum uh, 90 degrees I'm not going to do it. I'm going to simulate a more modest uh, airplane descent, which of course we're going up much faster. Uh, we're now flying at about 600 miles an hour and we're at 8,000 feet already. All right, we're being blown, out, blown around by the wind layers. That just happens. All right, so let's go ahead and this is useless. So let's go to the map. Now you can see this is going out. Pretty soon we'll be uh, achieving CTY. This line here again represents our horizon. Okay, 3.5 kilometers. We are now at um, about 13,000 feet, so we're going to turn the landing lights off now. Keeping it consistent with international aviation standards. You people who are accustomed to feet, beware. Above 100,000 feet, I will not give feet callouts. I believe there is no place for imperial measurements once you go into space. Okay, we're now overlaying CTY, and I need to actually give us a little bit more thrust. All right, so we're going to go to the HSI, and we don't have a signal yet. That's okay. We're not even halfway up. We're now at 13,000 feet climbing. You can notice in Orbiter now the, uh, the sky color is beginning to change as we go up higher. There's less air between us and space. One thing to note here, see um, this STP, if you look at, at the display here, underneath there, uh, the surface MFD, the display here, underneath there's this DNS, that's the atmospheric density, under that is STP. That is reading 54.00 kilopascal. That started at 101, and it's now at 53, so we've lost almost half the atmospheric air. Okay, we're now at um, 16,000 feet. The Delta Glider handles just like an airplane as long as you stay below the mid-70s, 70s being thousands of feet, and that's about 24 kilometers. Once you get above that height, things start to change. We're not exactly an airplane. I'll do a tutorial on that soon. We're 
about 20,000 feet. All right, by now we should be able to see CTY. And we have no signal. What's going on? Let's see. One of these has the better, there we go, it's this one has the better window view. So it's just like an airplane, except we have the capability to go out and get into orbit. Okay, seven kilometers. We're now at 23,000 feet. We just passed through a cirrus cloud layer. how we're doing on fuel. We're using quite a bit. We're going to cheat when we get to altitude and I'll explain what I mean by that a little bit later. Okay, 8 kilometers is 26,000 feet. We really should have a signal on that VOR button. I can tell you that it should be in the direction uh, 300, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch here. Okay, we're now at 9 kilometers, 30,000 feet, and now you can see basically what's happened is the, uh, the rockets have taken off because if you look at our static pressure here, we're now at one quarter of the atmospheric and our rockets are starting to heat, or, or not heat up, but they're starting to gain traction as, as the air pressure drops. 33,000 feet now. Okay, at this time I'm going to activate our altitude autopilot, switch that to 11. And our dynamic pressure is way too high, so I'm going to start reducing our, our throttle a little bit here. All right, so now remember I said we had scramjets down here. I'm going to cheat a little bit so that we get some extra fuel. They can't power the craft at, at this speed, but they can save our fuel a little bit. So hold down Alt and press plus. Now we've got scramjets operating. And we're accelerating again, so now we can back off Okay, that's too much. I'm looking at our indicated airspeed here. We want to hold about the same airspeed. So the scram should give us a bit of a fuel cheat. Okay, we finally acquired CTY. So at this time, we're going to change our OBY here to the correct course. And looks like we're on 273. So we're going to change our heading here, go to uh, 273. And now we're gonna do course. Thought I could do course. Let's do heading first. Wow. Bank angles are steep in this autopilot. By the way, I'm not using the uh, the D3, D9 client, so we shouldn't crash at all. But just in case, again, good idea to do a quick save. I don't like that they put the save right next to the exit button. That's kind of dangerous. And uh, in the turn, our course has changed to 270.
All right, let's see what happens with speed. Okay, speed is... So what we want to do is we want to lower our angle of attack. Or rather, raise. And yeah, that's the, that's the autopilot for you. Notice the quiet. Why is it quiet? Two reasons. One, we throttled down. Two, we're at 36,000 feet. And the atmospheric pressure is about one-fifth of what it was at sea level. Here now you can see outside the hatch, it's 22 kilopascal. And the external airlock is 22.7. But inside the airlock and inside the cabin, it is still atmospheric. So we are pressurized. What in the world was that? I have no idea what's going on right now. Maybe that's supposed to be the the. Um, I'm guessing that's the uh, scram engine supposed to be making sound, but that doesn't sound very good. All right, let's see what our, our flow, our flow is averaging between I and H. So let's see what happens if we uh, accelerate to 400. Let's see, we're bouncing between I and H again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this speed. It looks like it's more efficient, and the faster you go, the more your scramjets help you. So, in the in the uh, in the interest of being able to make it to the destination without running out of fuel, we're going to choose this configuration, which means we are now cruising at 36,080 feet at a speed of 895 miles per hour, almost as fast as the Concorde. I don't know why I can't select this course um, course autopilot. I should be able to because I'm I'm using the nav, but I'm guessing. Whoops! Potentially uh, could be a problem with uh, oh, what's the word? ILS. So in other words, it only uses ILS. All right, so we're going to wait for this to flip around once it hits 360. Okay, that's the end of CTY. Cross that off. Go to the next one, EFN 11430. But I had it set, so all I need to do is hit now. Oh, come on. I obviously didn't pick enough VORs. Let's see. Uh, we're going to have to do this manually now. It sucks. So PF, PFN... That's, uh, that's about a course of 300 degrees. So I'm going to adjust our heading hold here, 300. And we'll go out over, uh, I think this is Panama Beach. Continue until we uh, until we pick it up. It's kind of really annoying that they're not that more powerful. Okay, we're done with CTY. 
So the next one we're going to set to is uh, to re RQR at uh, 11080. And now we're all prepared to go back to that nav once we get to it. Go back to the HSI, and I'm going to estimate the course is going to be about 290 once we finally achieve. All right, meanwhile, let's see how we're doing on fuel. So the journey is going to be approximately 3,600 kilometers. We are just going out over the Gulf now which means we're not even a tenth of the way done, and we burn through a third of our fuel. I think they've changed the dynamics again. Well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make Edwards, not by a long shot. In fact, we'd have to refuel about three times. So I'm wondering, is there a nearer base? Uh, we might wanna go for Barksdale Air Force Base. If we do, Let's see. So we have LCH, and then after LCH, actually, instead of that, we'll do AEX. So we're gonna we're gonna do a diversion because there's no way we're gonna make it. ESF one one seven dot nine zero. It used to work in the old one. And then uh, next is going to be BMG at uh, 111.20. And let's bring up a info bar. Go to, uh, not Celestial Line, base. We're going to go to Barksdale Air Force Base. And uh, we want runway 33. So that's going to be uh, ILS. is going to be 109.90, close, and F4 to get rid of the menu, and now I'm going to go to the comm nav, we're going to adjust nav 4 to be 109.90, and now we should be configured for Barksdale Air Force Base. track button again, go back. All right, I'm gonna adjust this to a little bit closer to two nine or zero. I think that's probably closer to the VOR. It drives me crazy because it's right there. And we, for some reason we can't, uh, can't achieve it. Oh yeah, one more thing that I'm gonna do change the target. Right now we have targeted um, Edwards. So what we're going to do is click target, go to spaceports, right arrow, and go down to um, Barksdale. And now that's updated for us. Hit track again. Now we're tracking. Okay. All right, so one of the most important things of cruise is knowing when does cruise end. For an airliner, they typically use the three to one rule, which means take your altitude in feet, drop the last three zeros, and then take the resultant and multiply by three. For example, you're cruising at 40,000 feet, drop three zeros, you get 40, multiply by three, you get 120. This is the distance in nautical miles that she, from the uh, desired point of intersection with the ground that you should begin to set. This rule only works for Earth and it only works for airliners. You should add 10 knots for every, or you should add two nautical miles for every 10 knots of tailwind. In our case, we have the one-to-one -one rule because we have a glide slope which is almost as steep as the space shuttle. OK, 
Okay, I think we're doing okay on fuel. Again, notice the slight difference in uh, in air color. It's not 100% accurate in terms of hue. If we had the D3D9 client working, we would be able to do it, but for some reason it's not working. The higher you go, the darker the sky gets. C2, our uh, scramjet is producing a plume as well. But again, they're pretty ineffective once you get to about two to three Mach number. Which, by the way, we're doing a Mach 1.36 right now. Let's tour a little bit, shall we? Go to display, choose a surface. Now we should get some cities up here. Well, uh, I guess there's no large enough cities to be displayed. I thought we would at least be able to see uh, Panama City or Tallahassee. At least we can see Pensacola. Wow, that, that really lowers my frame rate. I'm amazed, considering how, how beefy my computer is. That's incredible. 43 FPS. I have a really powerful computer. I could Bitcoin mine if I wanted to. Okay, so just right there, that's Panama City. And uh, Tallahassee is right here. I did forget to check the runway length at Barksdale. That's extremely important when you're flying an airline. Go to base. Barksdale. Nope. Barksdale. There we go. Three and a half kilometers. That's decent. We can do that. I could test my theory by turning off the, uh, where's the throttle quadrant? Turning off the, uh, scram engines. Okay. It's not the scram jets making that sound. I wonder what it is then. That's Panama City. Never thought she'd be seeing Panama City out the window of a space plane now, would you? I don't understand that. Maybe that's a compressor or something. Check our fuel. We're not even halfway there and we've about burned half our fuel. Oh look, we finally got a PFN. And it's already too late for us to even use it. That's stupid. 
All right, press nav again for BFM. Unbelievable. So this is kind of useless. There is a 737 that you can download, but oh my God. I hope these are, are standard lookup tables. In fact, you know what? Let me Google these things. VOR BFM. Let's see what, what comes up. Air Nav Navate information. Mobile, Alabama. Okay. That sounds like it could be right. What did I look up? BFM. BF. Yeah. Yeah, that's Mobile, Alabama. Is it, does it happen to be 1128? It does. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I know the solution. So basically what you need to do, if you have FSX, if you have FSX, you can build a flight plan and you can, um, you can build a flight plan using the normal instrument flight rules that you would do in FSX and then uh, print it and then use it as your reference when flying. Um, the, the other choice is downloading. I'm sure there's a lot of freeware flight planners that you can download. But yeah, it would be nice to do this automatically because there's way too many things. Let me see if I can find an online flight plan. Only for flight simulation. <laughs> All right. Departure. Uh, okay. Now what I'm going to do is look up Panama City because we're close to that. Panama City Airport. Uh, Looks like MPTO. So let's put MPTO. And the destination, Barksdale Air Force Base. And that's KBAT. That's pretty funny. KBAD. And we're going to do flight level 360. Now, what I'm going to have to do is tell it to turn turn off all the... Because um, it's going to use a bunch of things. I only want it to use VORs. All right. Uh, hit plan. Interesting. I thought I was at Tokumen, which is in Africa. That's not correct. So KBAD. So what did I use wrong? Then? Okay. I guess it's the IATI that I want. It drives me crazy that there's the... Um, Basically, what they did is they created two naming schemas because they thought that the K would confuse people. But it drives me crazy because I know that uh, I know that the K means airport in uh, us. Oh, why did that default to Micronesia? I typed in PTY. So what the heck? shoot. <laughs> it did Panama City, not Florida. Panama City. Panama. That's what happened. Okay. So it's K-E-C-P. Okay. Alright. Great plan.
Okay, CEW Nexus MCB. So, I basically what it did is it printed out a bunch of rows for me to follow. I literally just planned my flight. So let's go to 116.7 is MCB. Oops, 16.7.0. Uh, unbelievable. So Orbiter needs to increase the strength of the BORs because I have a official flight planner telling me that I should be able to, to read MCB from... CEW and I can't which drives me crazy so that's not realistic yeah why can I not why can I not see MCB I'm above what is it one sixteen seven Yeah, unbelievable. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna do it the third way. So see that see that y'all tape at the top? There's a vise around uh, 286. We're just gonna fly into that vise, and by doing that, uh, we're gonna go straight there. It's called direct two, which is only done using modern GPS. So let's turn this uh, turn this useless cluster off. zoom out to see our destination. You know, if it's not going to be realistic, we're not going to be realistic. Okay, we're over halfway, and we're doing good on fuel. We should make we, we can glide on descent. In fact, we should, because that's the most efficient way of doing it. Again, remember I said, you know, we can get to Saturn in this craft, but I said it's not good. It's extremely inefficient with flying. Yeah, you can't even make it to California. I'll be lucky if I can get to Texas with this thing. But if you leave the atmosphere, then that changes everything. Let's configure radios for landing. We're going to do nav 3, set that to BMG, 111.20, and we're going to set this to our ILS, which is correct. So now all I need to do is go to the HSI, select nav 3 here, nav 4 selected here, uh, which means we're now configured our radios for landing. Alright, so let's explain a little bit about the map here. So, shown here are cities. Uh, this is the base that we're targeting, Barksdale Air Force Base. It's located at 93.66 degrees west, 32.50 degrees north. Its distance is now 574 kilometers away and the closest or the most efficient route is taking a bearing of 286.2. So that's the direction that we should close or be uh, following in order to get there most quickly. Alright, so if I go to display here, it will allow me to choose a few things here. So orbit lines, I'll explain later. It's not really important now. Uh, if I did, you'd be more confusing. If I turn the horizon line off, 
now you can see that circle representing our horizon has disappeared. So we're going to leave that to on. Okay. All right, now if I go all the way out, let me show you something cool. See this uh, terminator here, line plus shading. If I go off, the map has changed to be all black. If I do line, now it draws a line on the terminator. So what is the terminator? It is the line between the day side and the night side of Earth. So why is it not a straight line here? Because remember, the Earth is inclined 23.45 degrees. That's known as the obliquity, which means the poles are going to experience six months of darkness and six months of light. So how does this thing work? It slides exactly sideways. So if it slides sideways, anything at the pole will not intersect the line. And therefore, it will stay night forever, at least until the Earth rolls around the sun. Now, as the Earth moves its way around the sun, this is technically a sine wave. It will change its amplitude and shape to a square wave, become more sine or square depending on uh, what time of the year it is. Right now it's uh, March, so it's a little bit different. More square than it typically is. And now if I go to DSP and do uh, Terminator shading, now it shades everything under the daylight gray. So the South Pole is now experiencing its six months of brightness and the North Pole the six months of darkness. So if we go to line and shading, then it shows you the sunset plus the shade. Okay, plus the shading of the day. Turn the grid lines off. That turns the latitude and longitude lines off. If I turn coastlines off, then you can't tell anything. And uh, contour lines are for other other planets. You can turn the bases on and off. Uh, you can turn natural satellites on. If I did mod, now you can see the moon. So the moon is above that portion of the Earth. Turn that off. And I can turn cities on too. In fact, let's let's keep it that way. It's more interesting. Uh, impact features, islands, miscellaneous, sure, why not, and uh, tracking stations, why not. Let's see what it has for tracking stations here. Most of NASA's uh, tracking infrastructure is out here. So this, this looks like other. So this uh, miscellaneous shows you the Lake Mead, the Grand Canyon, etc. Uh, you can do mountains and volcanoes if you want. We're not going over any of those right now, so that doesn't really matter to us. So, uh, yeah, let's turn the cities off leave tracking stations on. See what, see what we get. Looks like these, uh, huh. Okay. I can't find, oh, I see. There they are. These must be the Apollo tracking stations. There's one way out here. Is that Johnson Atoll? Oh, no, that's Christmas Island. Okay. Interesting. Kind of useless unless you're doing Apollo. Which you can do. Let's go back to miscellaneous and cities. Keep things uh, interesting here. Click OK. And uh, just zoom in again. Yeah. 
You know, I'm surprised the Great Lakes don't have their own, uh, the Great Lakes don't have their own identifier, and neither does the Chesapeake Bay or the Delaware Bay. That's kind of weird. Is there a water features? There's an impact features. That, that should, check this out. That should definitely get Chesapeake on our map. There you go. Chesapeake Bay Impact Crater. That was the largest impact crater between uh, Chicxulub, which is likely the one to extinguish the dinosaurs. This occurred exactly halfway between then and now, 36 million years ago. It was the largest impact crater between Chicxulub and uh, between Chicxulub and present day and strangely enough it almost occurred at exactly the same line of longitude there's Chicxulub on the Yucatan Peninsula kilometers from Barksdale at uh, 400 meters per second. That's going to be about uh, 500 seconds, which is going to be um, about nine minutes. So we're, we're nine minutes away. Should be coming up over the horizon pretty soon. I really should get the uh, Boeing 737 mod working again because that's a really that's a really fun mod to use because in uh, in FSX you're earthbound what goes up must come back down not here you can go up and then come down on another planetary body State of Mississippi. And guess what that river is up there? It's the Mississippi River. Wow, I, I couldn't guess that one. I'm going to turn the speed autopilot. Okay, so whatever it was, it had something to do with the speed autopilot. I bet I can do a better job at this thing. fun to fly a spacecraft as an aircraft. Ooh, overhead. Is this interactive? Cockpit and instrument. Oh my gosh. Oh, it works. Oh my god. This is an this is the most amazing virtual cockpit I've ever seen. This is incredible. So you use white typically when you're in an atmosphere and it's night and you go go to red when you're in space because that preserves your night vision. Oh my gosh. Even the instrumentation lights up. 
it's too bad this thing has so many bugs because it's such a well done it's not a mod it's such a well done stock version I love it. it it drives me crazy that it has issues why are the landing lights on I thought I turned those off about 300 kilometers to go. Once we cross the Mississippi, then we'll be in Louisiana. I've been over these parts before. So this is the lower Mississippi. It's, um, let's do a bit of zoom here. It's highly meandering. That's uh, that's just what it does. Middle-aged rivers tend to do that. There's lots of islands and such down there. Um, several diversions, several oxbow lakes. That's what those um, lakes are off to the side. It wants to switch directions every once in a while. Now, if I look far enough down there, you can actually see the um, where the Red River comes in. Red River comes in from that side and there's a bit of a ladder here. The left side is the Mississippi and the right side is the Atchafalaya and that is the start of the Mississippi Delta which continues down there and down there should be New Orleans. That's Baton Rouge. Kind of, kind of hard to see New Orleans from here. I think, uh, I think we're a little bit far for that right now. I'm getting a strange yellow diffraction on the uh, Earth's horizon, so that tells me that we're, huh, it's almost noon. Uh, we shouldn't be, shouldn't look yellow at the horizon now. We shouldn't have that kind of relay scattering until later. Okay, now we're really getting close, 250 kilometers. So the one-to-one -one rule says that when we're 33 uh, nautical miles out, start descending. So 33 nautical miles uh, is 6,070.1 uh, feet. And then you divide by uh, 3280 to get kilometers. So when we're about 61 kilometers away, that's when we begin our descent. At this time, I'm now gonna change our heading to be not Barksdale Air Force Base because there's a runway that we need to line up with. Now at this time, I'm hoping that we can finally do the rest of the trip on the HSI. Gosh dang it. It's quite useless. Starting to get pretty low on fuel, but we're also getting really close. One note about the atmospheric autopilot, you notice how we just went left and we're banking right? The gain was not set perfectly for the, uh, for the craft, so it tends to overshoot. You see that problem more in the stock version. The XR2 and the Delta Glider 4 do not exhibit these problems. Okay, 200 kilometers. How about now? BOR. Nope.
Interesting. So Barksdale Air Force Base is actually in Shreveport. What's that little thing there? I mean, at this point, we have to be within BORs of BORs. Do I have that set right? There's no way that we don't have, haven't acquired yet. finally picked up VOR. It's only apparently once you get on the zoom level 128 which is extremely unrealistic. Okay, when it comes time to disable your autopilot you disable in this order. Speed, heading, altitude. This ensures that the autopilot doesn't leave any of your um, any of your flight air flight control services in a bad trim status. It used to be a big problem on the stock Delta glider enough to make it not really useful to use the autopilot but they have since fixed that. All right, we should be able to get a visual pretty soon on uh, Barksdale. Right there. I can see it. Now watch how quickly descent happens. We're initiating at 61 kilometers.
keep in mind too, the lower you go, this is like an airplane, at least once you get below cruising altitude. The lower you go, the less fuel efficient your journey is. Okay, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61. Speed off, heading off, altitude off, cut your throttle, control minus, cut off. Scramjets, alt minus, cut off. And reduce your elevator trim using the home or the insert key to be level. And now we will begin descending. Once you start to pitch down, don't want to go up below uh, 20 degrees, really. Then you can start using upward, uh, upward elevator to uh, prevent yourself from dipping too much. <laughs> We're still losing speed. That's incredible. Yep, that's our glide slope. That is our amazing glide slope. I think they've changed the dynamics a little bit. This seems a, a, a little bit insane even for this. I mean, we're down to 15,000 feet already. So I'm going to add the scramjets back in. I'm hoping that will be enough to slow our descent enough to be able to make the runway no problem. Let's see how much main fuel. We still got plenty of main fuel left. Pretty soon we should be able to pick up on our ILS. All right, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm beginning to line up. So this is the equivalent of the base leg in our traffic pattern. So I'm waiting for us to line up with the runway, in which case we're gonna make a pretty hard turn to the, um, to the north to line ourselves up with the runway. So it's gonna be when this hits about three, three. Okay, there's We've just picked up the ILS at this point. You are clear to land. That happens when you go below three kilometers. So when this hits 330, it's time to make our turn. Do you notice the course here? And it, actually, technically it's 331. And that would be too late, by the way. 2500. 15. 316, 317. Okay, it's time to start turning now. Yeah, we're going down a bit too fast here. Increase more. Uh, I'm going to need mains again. Yeah, we're going down really fast. And that reminds me, landing lights should be on. We're now below 10,000 feet. Okay, there's the runway. Like before, I hope I do not crash for some weird reason. Uh, anyway, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm not doing a visual this time. So what we're doing here, you can see this line here. Once it lines up, it means we're aligned with the runway. This middle, this middle line when it lines up. Alright, 
I'm going to cut off the uh, scramjets now. 1,000. Okay, we should be able to just coast in from here. All right, I've got a bad approach set up, so I need to correct this right now. Five hundred. Four hundred. Okay. Below one eighty. I'm now going to place the gear down. Two hundred. Looking to get the runway straight now. Radiator deployed. One hundred. Ignore that voice. And now I focus my attention to the end of the runway. Fifty. Oops. Cut my engines off real quick. Okay. I know what happened the first time. Okay. Basically what happened in the uh, in the first tutorial is we were too heavy. We had absolutely no problem landing. Um, the issue is maximum landing weight. And that's it. See? Smooth, nice smooth landing. Very quick. So what do we need to do now? First check, make sure all your engines are off. Alt minus, control minus, all the engines are indeed off. At this point, let's go ahead and reset our autopilot. And set speed. And fix our heading. So this effectively resets our autopilot. And uh, if we want, we can turn off the landing lights and the nav lights, the strobe and beacon. And uh, let's open our cabin hatch. Notice uh, we've now achieved atmospheric pressure. Interesting how the inside of the craft is pressurized to 100 kilopascal. That's the one that they choose to use. And we can power down the uh, multifunctional displays and uh, I think, what is it, Control H turns our HUD off. And that's it. Welcome to Shreveport uh, and Barksdale Air Force Base. We're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know that wasn't exactly what we were hoping to do. Um, but, you know, it, it, does, it does show you a little bit about atmospheric handling. So this has been Dr. Aeronautics. And join me next time for High Altitude travel where we will explore what happens when we're not a plane anymore and i will see you guys next time bye bye